David, thanks again, and uh, going to start us off. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, to everybody that's on the on the call for uh, joining us on uh, short notice. Uh, I talked to uh, Shay Weber about a half hour ago to offer my congratulations, and uh, uh, Shay, uh, by this award, uh, certainly got recognized as one of the top, if not uh, best defenseman in all of the National Hockey League. Uh, as, the cap- as the captain of the Predators, I mean, this is something that uh, we've known, uh, if, if you will, for, for a lot of years, but I think in the last couple of years, especially since, uh, uh, as we say, maybe the, his breakout or his recognition and breakout made it come, come in uh, a year ago in the Olympics when McCann won the gold medal and he played a significant role in winning the gold medal. But uh, uh, Shea's uh, value and his recognition, again, it has, has been there in the last uh, couple of years uh, with all-star, first all-star team this year and uh, second to Nicholas Lidstrom in the, in the Norris uh, voting. So uh, today's award is certainly uh, reflective of uh, of his value to the Predators and his worth uh, in, in the National Hockey League. So uh, congratulations to, to Shea. Uh, in this uh, process, which was a, a long uh, long process in terms of negotiation, uh, I, I got to meet with uh, Shea Monday night uh, up in Toronto when uh, his agents on our side uh, came to the agreement or understanding that we were not going to get a long-term uh, contract and uh, got to sit down and shade it just to make sure that uh, we were uh, both uh, going in the right direction, if you will, and on the same page. And I, I clearly believe that uh, we are, and I'll obviously let uh, 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 say what he has to say in a little bit. But for those of you that have been around Shay uh, and know him, uh, he is all about competing and competing for the Stanley Cup. He's been a winner in all levels of uh, play uh, throughout his career. And his goal, as is the Predators' goal, is to, to win a, a Stanley Cup. And my vision, hopefully in the near future, is with uh, Shea raising the Stanley Cup in the Predators' uniform. He conveyed it to me again on Monday that uh, uh, it was unfortunate that we, we didn't get this done in a longer-term situation. But he loves Nashville. He loves the players. And, you know, and, and looking back on the situation, I mean, Shea has uh, played with uh, 90% of these guys that are in our organization right now, starting as a, as a draft at 18 years old. So at, uh, at the uh, ripe old age of uh, 25, other than Francis Bouvion, he's their oldest player in defense and maybe what our fourth or fifth uh, oldest player on our team. I think Shea, like the rest of us, is very buoyed by the fact that we had our best season in, in terms of finally winning a, a playoff round. I think our franchise is, is definitely a growth uh, situation uh, with the stability of our ownership and uh, going from four to 16 fellows last year. And I think Shea and other players are, you know, recognized that. Uh, recognize that so I think going forward we're in a really good position as far as the negotiation which uh, again I'm not very always grateful to the other side because I'm not big in negotiating in the media and, and neither were they I mean we negotiated uh, long and hard for many many meetings and we talked from a one-year contract to a longer-term contract and as they say well why didn't you get it done well we, we just couldn't quite agree on the, the term the length or the structure so we just didn't get it done. Uh, from our standpoint, obviously that's a little disappointing. We would certainly have liked the certainty to have our captain sign a long-term contract, but that's not to say he's not going to. Um, it offers up a challenge. It certainly keeps uh, me and the rest of our organization uh, keeps us uh, focused, if you will, with our eye on the ball and what we have to do. Uh, Shea will be a restricted free agent again after after this season. So the process was the process. The arbitration was not the preferred route to go, but what is done is done and uh, it is over with. Again, talking Monday night with uh, Shea, I talked to him about the window of opportunity and why I would really like uh, to have he on a longer term contract and as an artist are better, better players because I really think we have such a young team right now that for every year that we have him here, I really do think we have a chance to compete for the, for the Cup. So having said that, uh, he signed. Uh, we will continue to work on a longer-term uh, contract with his agents uh, once the season gets started. It's up to me and uh, other uh, my my staff to surround our best players in Shea with some, some core players, with support players, players that allow us to compete for the Cup uh, every year. As far as moving forward with the uh, uh, Predators, I mean, uh, on priorities, I mean, you know, we're, we're a working process. We've got lots of work to do. We have a couple of other free agents that are unrestricted after the season, Suter and uh, Pecorini, which uh, we'll deal with at some point when, uh, when we, all the players are back in town. I still would like to 
when given the opportunity to improve our, our team, probably more up front than, than any other position. But I really look forward to training camp. I look forward to uh, Shea leading us as our captain. Uh, I, I don't exactly know what our, our age is of our team, but I have to believe we're one of the second or third youngest teams in the National Hockey League. I think we have a lot of things going for us. I think we're on a team on the rise, and uh, when you have players like Shea Weber, uh, I think you have a chance to win the Cup every year. So I'm really happy that uh, this process is behind us. I look forward to the future with Shea, and uh, uh, why don't I just turn it over for Shea to say a few words right now. Uh, thanks, David. Um, so I kind of just want to echo what David said. It's just nice to get uh, this uh, arbitration little process uh, uh, out of the way here for now, and um, hopefully this can uh, lead to further negotiations between uh, my agents and, and the creditors, and hopefully we can get something done long term. But for now, uh, a one-year deal is done, and I'm excited to, to get ready for the season. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to be a national creditor. I'm, Thankful, uh, thankful for all the fans for, for hanging in there in this long process and, um, hopefully we can get something else done and, um, you know, it's, it's exciting. I think we've got a great young team, like David said, and we were right there last year and, and, um, you know, I think we're, uh, gonna be right there again. Uh, we've, uh, had some good young players drafted and hopefully they can come up and contribute and, uh, we can just keep getting feeling better as, uh, the season goes on. Hey guys, uh, Thanks. We're, we'll open up for questions now. Uh, again, if you can have your phones on mute just to cut down the background noise if you're not answer, asking questions. So just uh, first tell us who you're directing your question to and then uh, your name and affiliation, and uh, we'll go from there. Hey, uh, Shay, this is Corey Curtis from WKRN in Nashville. Uh, I know whenever you go to this process, there's always a concern about relationships being damaged. Is the relationship still solid with David and the organization? Yeah, for sure. I think obviously that was just part of uh, part of the business. Obviously, nobody wants it to to come to that, but uh, you know it is what it is. We we've got something in place for now, like I said, and um, hopefully that uh, can allow us some more time to to get something longer term done and um, now, you know now it's just time to focus on hockey. Uh, it's been a long process, a little bit stressful and draining, but now it's just uh, get ready for the season and um, I'm excited. I think uh, like David said our season tickets are up and, and our fan support uh, has gone through the roof since last year's playoff run. So we're going to build off that and uh, you know hopefully uh, have a shot at the Stanley Cup. Jay, Kevin Allen of USA Today. Obviously, in these situations, it always comes down to term and, and salary and so forth. But are, are you satisfied as a premium player that uh, that David will have the uh, financial wherewithal to, to be able to surround you with uh, enough talent to, to win the Cup? Uh, I, I think, obviously, I think we're right there. I think uh, everybody knows how close we were last year against, against Vancouver. And, and from what I've heard from David and, and the owners is they're you know they're committed to winning and uh, they're going to do what they can to, to fill in uh, the pieces or, or you know what little uh, additions we may need. So uh, I'm confident with uh, what they've said and, and you know only time uh, time will tell. Thanks, Shane. Yeah. David, this is Corey Curtis again. A- along those lines, you've still got in the neighborhood of four to six million dollars to spend for next year's team, don't you? Uh, I I would rather not put a uh, dollar figure on it. I think uh, I look at more at opportunities where we have to to improve our improve our team. I think uh, a lot of things that we did this off off season were uh, to put ourselves in in, in this position. Uh, they do have the ability to sign players like Shea and a couple of the other uh, uh, top guys and and to to add on to uh, to what I would call top like a top six forward or top four defenseman when the need arises and when the opportunity presents itself. So uh, the owners are on, on board for that, and uh, we are, we'll be taking advantage of opportunities when they present them themselves. David, this is uh, Josh Cooper with the Tennessee, and um, you mentioned Ryan and, and Pekka in terms of trying to re-sign them. How does this award affect your ability to re-sign them uh, going forward? Well, again, I think everything is a, a, a one-off uh, situation, and uh, I guess in, if I had my utopia, I'd like to deal with uh, everybody together, but I don't think it quite works like that. I mean, 
you know, she has another year to go before he's unrestricted. They're both restricted. Unre- they're both unrestricted uh, this year. Uh, uh, all of our focus has been on on Shea's situation to this, to this point. I think uh, again, I would I would much prefer to get into uh, to training camp to get everybody there and to to see how good our team is and to sit down with uh, Shea again, uh, Suits and Tech at the appropriate time and just to see exactly what what, what our what everybody thinks. I mean, that's uh, I think as you know, Shea was. In some of our conversation with Shay, it's not just about the, you know term or salary too. It's about where the team is team is going and make sure we're on the same path. And I think you you want to get uh, uh, have a relationship and get input from your your top players, and that's uh, that's what I I want to do and have done with Shay, and that's what I want to do with uh, with Ryan and uh, Pekka before we move forward. David, this is John Manasso with um, Fox. Uh, you guys haven't done a whole lot in terms of. Um, adding players. I'm just wondering, were you waiting uh, to get Shea done to kind of know what your budget was before you could go forward and maybe add more pieces? Yeah, it wasn't the perfect uh, the scenario, I, I guess you could say, for, for for us in terms of the timing of the whole whole situation. Um, but having said that, in, in my our our plan, the, the things that I did, uh, we did during the off season were uh, were all calculated. If, if, if you will, to put us in this this position, um, you know, some some big decisions. I, I think the big, big decisions for us when you're dealing with veteran players like Steve Sullivan and J.P. Dumont to not have them, uh, you know, come back and to create openings for uh, you know some what I would call other young up and coming players. I really like the position that we're in. I'm well aware that uh, uh, we probably need a couple of forwards uh, uh, to to take us. Uh, to the level to truly compete for the Stanley Cup. Having said that, not to be talking out of both sides of my mouth, I am uh, a big believer in the group of forwards that we have and some of the young guys that have yet to reach their potential or maybe to blossom into what I, I think they can. And again, this gets back into talking about the, the window of opportunity is that um, uh, just saying, I, I mean, we have got two terrific goaltenders that are very young. Uh, Shea's the leader of our defense and he's He's 25 years of age. Everybody else is, is younger than, than that. And our forwards, I mean, it's taken a, a fair bit of uh, criticism, but, you know, we've got all of our, most of our forwards, uh, Hornquist, uh, Spalling, uh, Colin Wilson, um, Cal Riley, who's only played a portion of the season. We've got a lot of potential on our forwards of young guys, and I'm probably a little bit more bullish than uh, maybe uh, people from the outside, but if it's if they don't come through, then that's an area that we'll have to uh, we'll have to uh, do a better job, and that's where we'll have to make some deals to uh, to make our team better so that we can compete for the cup. Uh, just a yes, quick uh, in, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I just want to ask you a quick informational question. Um, are you allowed under the rules to do team elected arbitration again next year? No, we're not. So Shea, if we do not do a new contract for Shea next year. Uh, prior to July 1st, then he will be a restricted free agent. And if, uh, uh, just to further your question, meaning that he could be open for like an offer sheet to offer or something like that. Um, uh, Elliot Freeman from Hockey Night for both David and Shay. Uh, David, you're obviously on record many times talking about how much you value Shay as a player. And Shay, other players around the league have said that you have told them many times how much you like Nashville and like playing there. Are the two of you surprised in any way, shape, or form that you couldn't get this done at this point? Because a lot of people around the league are. Well, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a negotiation, Elliot. That's, uh, that's all I can all I can say. And as, as I said earlier, I think you know we've been very very good. Uh, like well, I think my relationship is good with Shay. I think my relationship is is good with his his agent and. We didn't get a, a deal done. I mean, there's there's reasons why we didn't get a deal done, and you know, it's 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 as simple as term and, and salary and, and structure. Um, that could be viewed as a as a failure. Maybe it's an opportunity. And uh, all I know is that this is where we are. I can't untie that. Um, I I sure he's been a big part of our team for since he's been drafted. I know he likes it here, and uh, I'm. I'm certainly not pessimistic. I'm optimistic that we will eventually get a uh, longer-term deal done. Shay? Yeah, no, I kind of 
the same way. It is kind of what it is. It's a, it's a negotiation process, and for whatever reason, um, you know, the onus has got to be on both sides to see didn't come to a long-term deal, but uh, obviously this is a temporary solution. And um, like I said, I love it in Nashville. I, I love, excuse me, love my teammates, love the fans in the city. So uh, I mean, this is what we have for right now, and then we're just gonna uh, go from here. Thank you, guys. David Corey Curtis again. Isn't the danger for you in this whole process that the floor has been set for you at 7.5 in negotiation? Well, that's that's what. Uh, uh, she is worth, and I mean, you know, we're we're a, a a member in the National Hockey League, and these are, this is what the salaries are of of uh, one of the best, if not best, defensemen in the league. And if we're going to uh, be part of the league, this is what we have to pay. Hey, Shea, it's Craig Custom for the Sporting News. I'm just curious, how closely? I mean, now that you do have a one-year deal and kind of the, the future's wide open, how closely will you be watching what Ryan Suter and Pekka Rene do long term? Um, I mean, that's what kind of makes this uh, this one year deal interesting is we're all going to be, um, you know, up again after one year. The only difference is those two are unrestricted, but um, I'm sure, obviously, we're going to um, be talking with each other or whatnot because we're pretty, all three of us are pretty close, and um, we'll be interested to see what uh, what everyone's um, looking to do, especially those two if they're uh, unrestricted, uh, you know, if they're going to sign long term if they're going to um, do a short term deal I don't know but I'm sure we'll um, hopefully get on the same page and, and we can play together for a long time so. and as a follow up just as far as the arbitration goes I mean I, I guess there's some danger in, in seeing the case and hearing it presented against you can you just kind of take us through the emotion of, of hearing you know uh, I guess a case against you seeing the figures thrown out uh, from the other side and, and what your thoughts are on that um, yeah, well, obviously, uh, like I said earlier, it's part of the business. It's, uh, you know, I mean, we always say that guys don't want to go through it, but it's, uh, it's a learning experience. I mean, it was uh, definitely interesting to see all the work that goes in there from both sides and, um, you know, the uh, technicalities of it. But, um, it's like I said, it's part of the business. It's over with now, and, and now I'm just looking forward to the season. David, this is uh, Josh. Tennis team again. Um, you had a situation with a, a franchise defense, and obviously in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, Scott Stevens. Obviously, he left Shea full of Predator, but how much of that situation kind of drives you in a situation like that? I know you've talked about in the past how, how tough it was kind of dealing with that. Well, it's, a, there, it's, a, it's very powerful. I mean, it's a, when you're dealing with your, your best and best player, it's, it's, it's it makes it very difficult. It's a, it's, a, it's pressure. It's a, it's a challenge, and it's a, it's a changer to your, uh, to your, to your team and to your, to your franchise. So, I mean, and, and believe me, I've talked to, to, to Shea about this, and I think he, he realizes where he is uh, not only in the National Hockey League but in, uh, on our, on our team. And uh, again, our, our talking hockey-wise and what have you is, uh, we're, we're right there. It's just we haven't done it, uh, we haven't got it right business-wise, and so we just. Have to keep keep working on that, but I I think uh, Josh, I clearly get what you're saying. I mean, uh, and I, I said it earlier. I mean, it's it's our goal, and always has been our goal to uh, sign Shea to a longer term contract, and so it, rem- it remains that way. But this is a this is a challenge. I mean, uh, you know, this conference call is just is about Shea today and a little bit about our club, but I'm pretty sure that there's 29 other clubs that have you know somewhat similar or. or or situations either this year or coming up. I mean, this is what we deal with all the time, and, and putting the club together, keeping the club together, and, and making the right moves so that uh, you can compete. And if you can, uh, as I say to, to our players, and I said to, to Shay again on Monday, I mean, my, my goal when we arrive at training camp is to be able to look every player in the eye and say, I, I believe we should challenge for the Stanley Cup this year. That's what my goal is, and part of that clearly is keeping top players like Shay. And also from a procedural perspective, when can you start negotiating with Shea's representatives again? Um, you know, I'm not actually sure with that. It may be right away, but it may be January. I just I don't actually know the, the answer to that. But uh, uh, it's not too long, that's for sure. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, it's Corey Curtis. And one more for Shea. And, and I know you kind of already touched on it, but if you, if you read the message boards and talk to the fans, there's still a concern out there, even though what you said, that people wonder, does Shea really want to be here? And what do you say to that question when it comes from, from the fan base? 
Um, I, I just don't see any re- reason why I wouldn't want to be here. I mean, uh, I love the city, like I said before. Our fans are continually, uh, continue to support us. And, and like I said, last year was to another extreme. I think they're, they're the best, if not, you know, some of the best fans in the league. And, um, we've got, uh, like you said, a really young team, a promising team to, to look forward to. You know, we always draft well and, um, you know, guys coming up can, can have some big years and, and we can take steps forward and, and you know, get past that second round and, and further on our goal towards the Stanley Cup. All right. Anything else? Hey, this is uh, Greg Wachinski with Yahoo. I apologize if this has been asked previous. I got knocked off the call. But was there any uh, any specific reason why there couldn't be a, a one-year contract between the two sides before arbitration? We we tried everything and we just didn't uh, we just didn't uh, agree. I mean it's uh, it's it, it was it was it was it's disappointing that we we couldn't and, and didn't. But it uh, is you know I, I, I guess that's just the way it happened. Thanks, Ed. Question for Shea from Gina Letta, TSN. Shea, uh, we can talk about winners and losers when we get out of arbitration, and obviously you came out on the good end financially, but. Uh, how much of a, of a hit was it to see the offer that was coming in? Was that offensive to you? Uh, no, I mean, like I, I kind of mentioned before, it's a business, and obviously, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to get the, the best deal uh, that they can, I guess, if that's what you want to call it, and it's just, um, you know, both sides presenting that case, and it's just, uh, it is what it is. I mean, it's, it's nothing personal, it's a business, and, um, um and move forward and, and try and win the Cup. Uh, follow up for David. David, were you concerned about that number going in that that might be interpreted as offensive, or is that just a part of the negotiations? Um, eh, yes, and yes, and yes. I mean, it's uh, again being a long-term general manager. There's been a lot of arbitrations, and it's uh, it's a process that you uh, try to do everything you can to avoid. We weren't successful in avoiding that. Um, Having said that, I, I hope our relationship is strong enough to know that that was uh, that was just the business part of it, um, and uh, it's, it's over. The process is done, and uh, uh, she's happy with the award. We're happy with the award, and we're moving on. Thanks, David. You uh, you look at the moves you guys have made. I mean, it looks like you've you've been kind of clearing space for finding your kind of three core players. Are based on this process and everything that's happened, are you? Any less optimistic about the long-term the ability to do that? No, you're you're right. A lot of uh, what uh, what we've done, at least in part, was to clear space to uh, to make uh, dollars available to to sign uh, players like uh, Shea. But uh, also, it was uh, a, a hockey hockey move too to, to believe that we had uh, better or up-and-coming players that would take us to a higher level um, in this window of opportunity that I talked about. And, and again, I'm not you know. Specifically, if that's uh, uh, you know Marcel Gotch, who's a good player for us, uh, playing in the third center, we're going to give Cal O'Reilly every chance to to hopefully be to be better than uh, uh, Marcel Gotch in that position. I mean, Joel Ward was a terrific player for us. He signed for four years at three million dollars, which is fabulous for Joel, and we're happy for him. But we feel uh, that uh, we have a young player like Nick Smalling that, uh, given the opportunity, can be even more effective and maybe even more per productive and that's the route that we've uh, that we've taken and uh, again we're going to be judged by our results I mean we haven't played any games yet for, for next year so those are the decisions we made both uh, both financially and, and hockey wise to get us in the position uh, where we are today just one or two more yeah uh, Christopher Martel from the predatorial David uh, did the uh, change in agents have any effect on the negotiations whatsoever well, it's a, it took, uh, probably took a little bit of a while, I guess, for both of us to, to sort of get, uh, uh, I guess you'd say, uh, engaged. I mean, I think there's a little bit of a, um, uh, uh, I guess, you have to you know, have your story to tell sort of where the player is coming from, what's important to the player, uh, what's, and then the other side, what's important to the franchise, what we're kind of trying to accomplish. So there's a little bit of time that was, was involved, but, uh, you know, having said that, uh, uh, it was a pretty pretty normal negotiations.